Uh, it is time for Free Speech Fridays. Um, it's because Ben's away. We're not in our normal groove. Um, but it is time for Free Speech Fridays. It's brought to you in association with the Free Speech Union of New Zealand. And the Free Speech Union are the champions of free speech in this country. They will support you in your right to say what you believe and you think, whether it be on campus, in your workplace or in your life in general. I do encourage you, please, to uh, follow, uh, join the Free Speech Union. Visit their website, FSUNZ, uh, uh, will get you there. So um, let's kick it off. And two very good guests this morning, both, I think, uh, intrinsically interested in some of the issues we're going to talk about. First, from the Centre for, for Political uh, Research, our friend Muriel Newman joins us. Nice to have you back, Muriel. How are you? Very good. Thank you, Sean. Lovely to be here. All right. And uh, from um, the Auckland hospitality scene, the gunslinger himself, Leo Malloy. Sheriff Leo Malloy. How are you, Leo? We got you there, Leo? Here we go. Yeah, I am Sean, but I think I'll make Josh is having a few problems during the ship today, Andy. All right, no, I think we've got you there. We've you can hear me, I can hear you, you can hear Muriel. Uh, all is brilliant. All right, um, look, I want to kick off with this story, though. If you watch TV and said it's not really a happening thing, and if you read the Herald, it's not a happening thing. Let's just say the tornado of allegations, Muriel, around the Maori Party and the Tamaki Makarau, um seat. Um, first, Muriel, are you surprised by any of this? Not really, to be honest. Um, there were symptoms that all was not well, um, to, especially to do with, you know, the uh, election results, um, which were quite surprising um, to some, to many people. Um, so, and also with regards to um, the way, you know, John Tamahiri um, talks and delivers, you know, um, his affairs. Um, he's a, a person who likes to boast rather <laughs> on, the, on the political stage. And so, you know, he sort of... Um, he li likes you to think that, you know, he's got everything under control. And so when these allegations came along, you sort of sat there and you thought, hmm, this is what was going on behind the scenes. I think it is uh, very, very significant what Andrea Vance um, has alleged and produced so that we can all see it because it's a web that... Um, you know, goes through many different government departments. It if potentially has affected election outcomes, uh, the number of Maori seats that we've got, um, the census data. You know, there's just huge um, uh, sort of issues that flow on from this. So it's massive. Yeah. Leo, you've been a mate of JT's. You know him. Um, what do you make of it all? Can I plead the fifth? It's a joke, by the way. Um, I'm a bit disturbed like everyone else that does worry me. Having said that, I mean, if you look at the Beards Road and Otara example, you know, there's been a lot of chicanery going on around politics and these sort of uh, resource databases that have been circulating for years and years and years, and it's not alone with TPM. Having said that, I think in this instance here, the optics aren't good, but let's give, you know, give it time and shine some light on it and see what comes of it because I wouldn't be rushing to pass judgment on them, although I have to say that Manurava one did look very, very, very fishy. Um, right. I can see if, if Pena Hanare is not getting involved, he probably should be. Well, there's some um, conflicting reports about whether or not he is seeking legal counsel. But, Leo, I think you make a good point. There has been blanket denial from John Tamahiri, apart from the one issue of treating which he claimed as a tikanga right on the marae. This is giving the ice creams if you turn up to register or whatever. You have had a lot well, of dealings with John Tamahiri. Do you? Yeah, but, but, do you yeah, think but he's... Do you, think, do you believe his denials? <laughs> JT's a lawyer. He's had a lot of experience in the arena. He's, you know, he's pretty streetwise. If he's denying something, you'd need to do, read the fine print and see what exactly he's denying. Um, as to treating those seriously... you bringing prisoners down off roofs with KFC. You know, you're offering people $300 and a bag of Pizza Hut stuff or something to go and get vaccinated. Treating's become a part of life uh, and there's a certain type of person who expects it nowadays. So yeah. I wouldn't make, wouldn't make too much of the treating matter. Okay. 
Muriel, it may well be, um, and there has been, and we must mention that JT says nothing to see here. It might be that all this goes away. Uh, it also appears this morning and from issues this week, Pena Henare is being quiet and Willie Jackson seems to be standing by his mate. Um, though Chris Hipkins says these things are disturbing, indicative perhaps of tensions within the Labour Party caucus. But if we put this together with the Māori Party's extremist rhetoric in the last couple of weeks around a separate uh, parliament, do you think it indicates that the Māori Party is getting politically isolated and being seen as the nut job radicals they are? Yes, well, you know, I think we've all watched in disbelief, really, um, the way it's all ramped up. Um, they signalled after the election that, you know, they were going, <laughs> going to be more radical. And, uh, you know, I don't think we thought that they would go as far as, you know, calling for a new parliament and all the rest of it. So it, it is a worry. It's a worry for the country because we don't usually see such radicalism you know, from the House of Representatives. I mean, we see it on the periphery, but not usually right in the, the heart of it. But also it's a huge problem for the Labour Party because, you know, if they need the Maori Party to form a new government in the future, um, then, you know, the Maori Party are quickly making themselves appear quite toxic and uh, to the general population. And so, you know, I think that's why Hipkins is got a bit of a difficult job at the moment trying to distance himself from them without actually alienating the fact that they might actually need them in the future. Yeah. So I think it's a big problem for Labour. Mm. Leo, if we put aside, you know, the Andrea Vance story and all of that, you still go back to these pretty extre this pretty extremist stuff online about the separatist parliament. Yeah, I get all that, and we had this conversation two weeks ago, and I said then that I think JT and the TPM focus far too much on the negative side of the Abraham, the, the left-hand side of the bell curve, and they have an opportunity here to do something constructive, and they appear determined not to. They want to be divisive for reasons. The only thing I can, if you rationalise it, the only thing I can attribute it to is they're trying to get the disenchanted members of the Labour Party to shift over, which is possibly true. But while we're on the subject, and it's all very well to point your finger at TPM, uh, didn't we have a party called the Green Party with 14% of the voter running around supporting internationally recognised terrorist organisations quite openly in Parliament? Since when's that been acceptable? That's different, Leo, because they've all got no, ADHD. They've all got ADHD, oh. <laughs> and that's an excuse. Oh, Look, guys, did, have you picked up on this? It's only broken this morning. Tori Farnow has announced she's been diagnosed with ADHD, and if she's lucky, um, a little bit of autism, and that's why she's such a hot mess when it comes to being Mayor Muriel. Oh, for goodness sake. Yeah, no, it's just ridiculous. I mean, you know, you can blame what you like. The point is when you accept office, you accept a responsibility to work for, you know, the good of the community or the country, whichever office it is. Um, and, you know, if you fail in that job, then you should take that on your back. It's, um, it's up to you to actually uh, deliver what you promise you're going to deliver and if it's the betterment of the community or the country, then, you know, so be it. That's what we expect. Yeah. And, Leo, I mean, you know, if anyone's got ADHD, it's you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't, by the way. I went to my doctor once and said, there's any chance I've got ADHD? And he said, you couldn't go through... We, we do 40 hours of theory lectures a week in fourth year at vet school. And he said, you couldn't possibly concentrate to get, to get yourself through vet school if you're ADHD. What do you think, I'm though? This is classic I'm, victim playing, victim role playing, isn't it? Over Tori Farnow. Yeah. You're talking about her? Oh, I mean, she's an embarrassment to the city, but Wellington's an embarrassment to the country, so Wellington gets what it deserves. They voted for her. I mean, seriously, I, I'm, I'm staggered. But anybody, she called herself NeuroSpicy yesterday. Anybody who's associated with the Green Party, apart from James Shaw, but even he's arguably slightly dodgy, but they're all neuro warped, weird. Look at Chloe. Tell me she's not medicated. You look at the pupils on her eyes every second day. One day they're as big as sauce. Well, it might not be something you get at the chemist, Leo. That's what I'm, you hear what I'm saying there. Muriel, can I just check, are you neurodiverse? No. <laughs> oh. No, I can firmly say Why no. do I feel strangely disappointed? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 uh, Sean, yeah. Sean, I don't know how long we've got. 
I'm, yeah. I'm at the gym and I'm not sure where we are on the clock, but we absolutely have to discuss Costa's behaviour. We, we're going, going to get into that. What we're going to do, Leo, you do another yeah. rep, five reps or whatever. We're going to go to an ad break and then we're going to come to back and we're going to talk about the booze thing. So disappointed Perfect. no one's got any mental incapacities apart from me on the platform this morning. Um, by the way, this is brought to you, Free Speech Fridays, by the Free Speech Union, the champions of free speech in New Zealand. <laughs> 